great slaving raid took place on a hot afternoon after several days of frantic activity within Red Fort. We arrived at the nest to see gossiping and seething crowds of red ants massing for a clearly important event. We knew not what. And then, at some sign, the ants swarmed out of the city from every exit. Was it a little Napoleon who led the call to arms, or had the heat of the sun alone signaled the ants to act in unison? We followed as the army set out across the forest floor. The rough terrain of twigs and leaves separated the well-organized ranks into seemingly raggle-taggle brigades. Fifteen yards from their own citadel, the red ants stopped, regrouped, and then descended upon an unsuspecting nest of black ants, the Formica fusca. The black ants sallied forth bravely to beat off the thieves and kidnappers, waving their antennae. Hurrying furiously, they bit at the legs and heads and feelers of the busy, bloody ants. They attempted, sometimes with success, to grasp the red invaders and bite them to death. The red ants had one purpose only, to snatch the unhatched black ants from the nest and carry them in their fine jaws to Red Fort. From that moment on, the fate of the captured black ant nestlings was sealed. They would live and die as red ants, not as true black ants. They would feed and nourish little blood red ants and in time respond to the sun by massing to attack their forgotten families. It is as if environment were everything, and inheritance, nothing. <laughs>